video are, con are going to be to ask what a flow net is and how do we draw one, to look at what an EP, an equipotential line is, and what a FL, a flow line is, and to establish boundary conditions for our flow net. So, the first thing we need to do is have a look at what a flow net is. A flow net models the flow of water through a soil sample. Okay, so let's say we have a tube like this, right, which is filled with soil. Let's say that our datum is at the bottom. So our datum is at the bottom. Let's say that this height was five meters, right? And let's call this point A. So the head at A would be five meters and the head at B would be zero, okay? Just because of the elevation, uh, there's, no, there's no pressure at all in this system. <clears throat> so what's gonna happen is that the water's gonna come if we pour water through the system and flow through the soil. So what we do is we model this using something called a flow, a flow net, okay? Which has two components. It has something called flow lines, which are these red lines. They just show the, the water, how it flows through. And then we also need to show something called an equipotential line. An equipotential line, equipot equipotential line is just a line which shows points of equal head, okay? So for this example, it's very simple. The, there's a constant head of five meters along that line. Say over here, we we'll probably have a constant head of about four meters. Uh, this line, maybe three meters. At this line, maybe two meters. And at this line, maybe one meter. And then down to a zero head level at the bottom. <clears throat> okay, so this is a basic flow net. A flow net has flow lines, which demonstrate the um, direction of the water flow. And they also have equipotential lines, which represent points or planes of constant head. Okay, now there's two important things about this concept. An equipotential line, so let's call this line EP, the equipotential line, is always perpendicular to a flow line. And also they have to form something called a curved linear square. So in this example, we just have to form a square because it's all parallel and perpendicular. But we're gonna see example in a sec where you can't actually form a square. You have to form something called a curved linear square. All that means is that it, essentially a circle just has to fit inside it, right? So circle sort of fits in there. Okay, we can fit a circle, it forms a square. So, EPs and flow lines. So this is a flow line, that red line. So the EP and flow lines always have to be perpendicular to one another and they have to form curved linear squares. So, why do we need have to establish a flow net at all, you may ask? At the end of the day, we want to find flow through a sample of soil. So we saw in the previous videos, we could just use that formula Q, use the area, the coefficient of permeability, and the hydraulic gradient to work out the flow through the sample, okay? For this one, you could do that. However, if we deal with a more complex example, that formula no longer applies, okay? And I'll show you why. So let's say, like in many real-world examples, we have um, some type of say pile, a pile of soil, okay, this might be something like an earth dam or something like that, right, <clears throat> let's say we have impermeable rock on the bottom, so water can't fl flow through here, right, and let's say that this is all filled up with water, okay, so here's water, so now, it isn't so obvious how to work out the flow rate through this system, okay? The flow is gonna go, once again, we know flow goes from points of high head to low head. So if we define our datum at the bottom here, the flow is gonna come, we have a zero head value here, and we have a head value of the height of this water. So the water is gonna flow from here to here, right? But it's not so clear cut how we're actually gonna work out the flow rate, okay? Because in the previous videos, we used Q, equals KADH on DL, where DH and DL were the, was the hydraulic gradient, okay? And it's not so obvious how we're gonna get the hydraulic gradient from an example like this. So we need to construct a flow net, which is a graphical solution to our problem, okay? So before we even start with this problem, we need to establish three boundary conditions, which are gonna enable us to start it. So the first boundary condition first boundary condition is that at a water to soil boundary we have an EP we have an equipotential line okay 
So I'm going to draw my equipotential lines in blue. <clears throat> so we will have an equipotential line here. Okay. And we'll have an equipotential line coming up here. Okay. So this is an equipotential line because it's at a barrier of soil and water. That's the first the first boundary condition. The second boundary condition is that a soil and impermeable boundary. Okay, at a soil and impermeable boundary, we have a flow line. So, for example, our flow is going to come from this water down here, right, and it's going to come across this boundary and back up. Okay. This might seem a bit weird that the flow is going down and, and then up, but we just have to remember what causes flow is a change in head. So it's going to go from there to there. Okay? And the third boundary condition is something is that we have um, equal head drops at a something called a ferratic surface. And we'll see what that is in a second. So just we're going to come back to this one in a sec. <clears throat> but we can start filling in everything else, right? So we know that the water is going to flow from here to here, right? We also know that equipotential lines and flow lines have to be perpendicular and form curved linear squares, okay? So if we draw, start drawing some flow lines, so this is going to flow like this. Uh, let's say, okay, also, sorry, at a water soil boundary, we have an EP, and also at a soil air boundary, we have an EP, okay, so this is going to be the soil to the air, this is another EP, so EP and an EP there, okay, which makes sense, this flow line is pretty much coming in perpendicular, and this flow line is coming in perpendicular to that EP. Okay, so now we're going to have to continue this. So this flow line will say come like this. It has to come in perpendicular, so it's going to come up like that. Uh, this one is going to come, say, like this. And if we draw one more, something like that. Okay, so there are our flow lines. Now, <clears throat> we have to deal with this ferratic surface, this third boundary condition. So a ferratic surface is a a ferratic surface or a ferratic line is a surface with constant pressure. So, for example, along this surface here, we have air, okay? So we're going to have a constant pressure. This isn't a ferratic surface because at, at um, along this surface, we're getting pressure buildup, which is changing due to the hydrostatic force of the water, okay? Whereas here, there's no change in pressure. So at a ferratic surface, the equ that we have equal head drops or the um, equipotentials are spaced equally. Okay, so I'm drawing my EP potentials in blue. So, and they're spaced equ equally as a function of the height, right? So, if this is H, I need to split up H equally to put my EPs. We know EPs are going to run perpendicular to flow lines, so they're going to come. So, I'm doing it in blue. So there, so say it's roughly there, this one is roughly there, and this one is roughly there, okay? So they have to run perpendicular to my flow lines, and also we need to form curved linear squares, okay? We need to form a square, a square which is sort of like distorted, which can fit a circle in. That's what a curved linear square is. So we need to make sure that we're sort of forming squares here. Okay, this one will come down. Okay, this flow net is not so perfect. And then this one would maybe come like this and down. Okay, so what you've noticed is, I mean, this is a good curve linear square here. It's not so good here. I would have to come and fix this solution up. Okay, it's not perfect. I need would, I would have to redraw it and adjust it so that I get more curve linear squares, not like these rectangle shapes forming here. I need to get a shape like this everywhere. Okay, what you need to notice though is that as I'm coming in from a, a equipotential line, so all these blue lines are EPs, my equipotential lines, place of constant head, I'm coming in at 90 degrees to my flow line. So say here, 
I came in like out like that so I could come in at 90 degrees okay so this models the flow of the water to this point here with these flow lines these blue lines now represent the place of equal head what that means is if I were to come and stick a tube or a standpipe at any one of these points so let's say I stuck a standpipe in there okay and we stuck a standpipe at this point the water would rise to the same point above the datum okay so the water would rise to the same point above the datum okay they, they are at the same height okay so that's what an EP is an EP is a place of constant head okay in the next video we're going to be using the, this flow net or flow net similar to this to calculate the actual flow rate of the water from this point to this point hope that helps guys